So today's lesson is no back band plus freewheel plus really sticky hole <laughs> equals shitty swim. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Alex Barham, and today we're going to start a new series on this channel, which I'm just going to call Getting Better. For a lot of people, getting better at whitewater kayaking is somewhat mystifying. It's something where you can see that there's sort of an average boater, and then there are, you know, guys that are just simply elite. Most of us just want to run class five and enjoy ourselves doing that. So this is going to be part one, fear and failure. You would think I would start somewhere in like a skills, like rolling, bracing, something like that, but no, let's talk about the head game. For most people, we grow up in a world where we come from stuff that humans are supposed to do, problem solving. You get an 85 on a test, you pass. You get a 74, you pass. But if you get a 64, you failed. Well, yeah, basic arithmetic, things like that, humans are supposed to do. There's no way that humans were ever supposed to run whitewater. So for starters, let's accept the fact that even for a class five paddler, we're somewhere right below pigs flying in terms of what the human body is supposed to do in nature. What we're actually supposed to do in nature is survive, reproduce, and achieve. Only one of those things is satisfied through whitewater kayaking. It is the ultimate challenge that changes all the time, and that's why achievement in this sport is addicting and life altering and just something that draws you back even if you've been away for years and years. Many of the people watching this will already know and will commiserate but for those who don't, the basics, learning how to brace, learning how to roll, learning how to put your skirt on are going to be a struggle. So right out of the gate you are going to have to learn how to cope with failure. That is extremely foreign to us. We are expected to achieve, we're coddled most of our lives. And that's why so many whitewater kayakers who get good are contrarian. People who like to do what they're told they can't do because that's a basic coping mechanism to allow pigs to fly. So for starters, accept that fact that failure has a long, deep tap root in the foundation that is whitewater kayaking. For freestylers, this is especially true. You look at some of these tricks, you know, a blunt is over carving and winding up backwards. A helix is flipping on one side, rolling up on your other side, and if you do it fast enough, it's a helicopter move, which we call a helix. If you do it slowly, it's a beater. But that's how it became a trick, right? The best advice that you can get in kayaking is embrace failure, learn to learn through your failure, and accept the fact that you're gonna suck sometimes. Now, that's all easy to say when you're in a pool learning how to roll or you're in your first couple of class two runs, right? But for many people who run class four and five regularly, that sounds bananas. You know, no one wants to fail when they can get hurt. But that's the whole point is that if you're doing something in hard white water, it should ideally already be something that you learned how to do somewhere easier. Really, the fundamentals of kayaking are building blocks. 
you know, picture Legos. All they should be is getting bigger and bigger and harder to piece together. That's it. That's what kayaking is. From your boost stroke to your brace to your draw, all you're doing is reapplying these in higher and higher consequence places. So if you're on a stable learning trajectory, you should find yourself doing things that a year, two years ago, you said, no way, never will I ever. Let's move on to failure because that's really the big one. Failure is part of whitewater. And honestly, if you can accept and learn how to cope with failure in whitewater, you can learn to achieve things in life that you never thought were possible because you will adapt and overcome in the clutch. For the minute population of you guys who both follow paintball and whitewater, there's an expression that comes from that sport which is called, don't be good, be clutch. And that's really what this is all about. It's not always about perfectly executing on a step up run or move where you weren't sure that you were gonna do it but you gave it a shot. A lot of times you are not going to exceed your expectations. Really, you're gonna be happy if you meet them. But in the event that you do fail, you need to be able to handle it, analyze what happened, and learn from that mistake. Simply put, if there are no boundaries or rules for you to bang against in life, then you're never gonna become a better person. And in Whitewater, if there's no failure, no beat down, no missed line, you're never gonna learn why techniques are important so that you can get better. I think everybody knows that friend who got competent at really a level below their abilities, class two, class three, and they don't progress further. And the reason is because they are fearful of failure. The first time that they fail, they bounce backwards and they don't want to experience that again. By the same token, most people know somebody who progressed through whitewater incredibly quickly because they were fearless of failure and willing to take extreme exposure to learn the lessons and get through those course materials faster than average. I absolutely, for, through the tone of my voice, you should be able to tell, I don't recommend either. However, you should always be putting yourself in a place when possible where there is a chance of failure, both so that you are mentally strong in terms of being willing to be fearful, but also so that there is a chance through failure that you can learn because you can memorize moves from very simple runs and on very technical runs to where you are absolutely smooth as butter, but if you go and run something else, suddenly you're not working off muscle memory and you're not nearly as good as a paddler as you thought you were. This isn't just limited to river running and creaking. For play boaters, it's probably gonna take you a really long time to get that first stable front surf. And then almost an equal investment to get the basics like a spin or a side surf. And then you get your first front blunt. Well, while it's really easy to be satisfied by being able to do a front blunt and spin and a side surf, the thing is that the more that you learn about body mechanics and how paddling really works, the easier it actually gets to progress. So for example, it took me forever to get from a roundhouse to a really nice blunt to an air blunt. But because I had learned so much along the way, in the same summer, I went to backstab, bread and butter, air screw, McMasty the year later. All of those things just cascaded down because I had spent all of that investment and time learning fundamentals. 
Unfortunately, play boating is sort of the perfect place to learn this mentality because it is so low consequence 90% of the time. For those of us who are looking at hazards that could really cause bodily discomfort, pain, harm in creaking and river running, it is much more difficult to wrap your head around taking bigger and bigger chances just to test your personal ability. But I assure you that as we go through this series, we will lay down the fundamentals and the foundation for being comfortable doing this safely and understanding what, when, and why for expanding yourself. To put this in the form of an example, let's say you're going out and you're gonna do your first 15, 20 foot boof. That's obviously scary. I can certainly remember my heart pounding as I stood at the lip the first time I did something that big and every fiber of my being, every survival instinct from my lizard brain saying, no, don't do this. This is bad. You're hung over. But after standing there and looking around, realizing this is a fear-based decision I'm making. I have the ability to be here. There's a run out that's class three. There's a run in that's class two. Ergo, by the time I've gotten to the lip, there shouldn't be anything that's screwed me up before. There won't be anything that'll screw me up after. All I'm doing is falling to water. I have cliff jumped higher than this. This is safe. What did I have to wrap my head around? Well, failure. What was I afraid of? Landing on my head, not getting a boof. I'll put a picture right here. Burning man the hell out of her. Did it matter? No. Did I succeed? No, I absolutely failed. I did not boof, I did not land clean, I rolled up, got an ice cream headache, but I walked right back up there and I did it again. And today I run that thing all the time, super clean. That's progression and that's what happens when you conquer fear and failure. The real joy and satisfaction that comes from paddling for most of us is not going to be sitting in our comfort zone, but actually learning, progressing, challenging ourselves and being proud of our achievements on the other side. You know, the, the thing I like to tell people is that seeing a challenge, ignoring the consequences and going anyway is stupidity. Seeing the challenges, accepting the consequences for what they are and going after a thorough assessment is courage. By definition, paddling takes a lot of courage. We don't put it in terms like that very often, but sometimes it's important to give a name to what it takes to get on the water every day and push yourself. That's all for this one. Please, if you have a question, leave a comment below. Don't hit me up on social media. And I will see you on the next one. Like and subscribe and all that jazz.